Okay, this is my sample recording for my social work 501. Uh, welcome students. I hope that the first two weeks of classes have been good for you. Um, I'm going to kind of just do an overview. Hi, I'm going to give you a little video overview of chapter one. Sorry, it's a couple of weeks late. Hopefully y'all have read through the textbook. I put the PowerPoint into D2L, so it's under the lecture area. And rather than going through the entire slide presentation, because y'all are very capable of reading, I'm just gonna kind of hit some of the things that I think are most important uh, for students to know about the history of social work and the overview of the helping process. Our profession was founded on two different approaches to helping. One is what we typically think of as casework or direct practice, but the other component which is so important to social work has to do with social reform, working with communities, um, advocacy, other areas of bringing about change. So these two approaches were embodied by what we called our mothers of social work, Jane Adams and Mary Richmond. And I've included a couple of videos about these two women. Uh, one of the slides has a picture with Jane Adams. So I always tell the story to students in my face, face class, and I hope it'll stick with you uh, online, in that when I first started teaching here at A&M Commerce some years ago, I thought it might be nice to get a couple of fish to have in my office and kind of provide a serene environment for students to come in and be able to watch the fish. So back then, you at Walmart, you get a couple of fantail goldfish for 49 cents. So I got a, a fish bowl, got two fish, and of course I named them Mary and Jane for Jane Adams and Mary Richmond. Well, unfortunately Mary did not last long, so she was belly up in a couple of weeks. But Jane, on the other hand, did quite well and thrived. Well, it got to be Thanksgiving, and I thought, you know, I probably need to take the fish home because I don't know if the heating's gonna be on or the temperature climate and be able to feed her and so forth. So I took Jane home with me. Well, Jane Adams is definitely reflective of resilience because this fish not only survived, she thrived. So we went from a one gallon little goldfish bowl to a two gallon larger tank, then to the five gallon tank that had the full filter system and she just kept growing. So finally we ended up with the 10 gallon fish tank. And I joked and said every time that, that Jane would want a new fish tank, or something different, she'd go vertical. And next thing we see is Jane would be vertical. Jane grew to be the size of a large koi, no kidding, about this big, lived five years. We used to be able to talk to Jane and if you jiggled your finger at the fish cage, she would follow you around. So usually when I tell students a story and you think about Jane Adams, you remember the story of my goldfish. So I hope, hope that helps you remember the story. There are some interesting facts. I've put a slide in there with some quotes and also to encourage you to actually use, this is a non-scholarly source. We don't oftentimes recommend it, but Wikipedia has got some really fascinating information about Jane Adams and Mary Richmond. So I hope you will look them both up, take a few minutes to read about their history, and I think that you will be um, as fascinated as most people who read about them. And so you come to understand that these two women had a tremendous impact on a profession, but they were significant um, historical figures and amazing women who kind of revolutionized the process of helping. We talk about defining social work. It is both an art and a science. There is a lot to it. Um, I'm a little concerned when I think that students may not be reading all of the content of the textbook because this is so fundamental to everything you need to know about social work. The NASW, which is the National Association of Social Workers, that is our professional organization. It defines social work um, as enhancing human well-being and helping meeting the basic needs of all people with particular attention to the needs and empowerment of people who are vulnerable, oppressed, and living in poverty. And so, just so you know, NASW, that's one of our acronyms we use in the profession, National Association of Social Workers, just as the AMA, American Medical Association, is the professional association for doctors and the medical profession, the NASW is our professional organization. Um, the helping process is basically a defined change process. It starts with intake and engagement, 
then it includes an assessment process, which is one of your assignments this semester, then problem identification, planning and contracting, and that's all one step, then the actual treatment and intervention, and then evaluation, and then termination. So this helping process is used at all levels of practice. Your book also talks about the number of social work roles, and we wear many, many different hats. I should have brought some hats in here to try on to show you. We wear lots of different hats. We operate in many different roles. And I think when you talk about levels of practice, in addition to this planned change process or helping process, we also talk about being able to work with clients at the micro, which is individuals and families, the meso, which is working with groups, or the macro level system, which is organizations and communities. So we engage in that planned change process, starting with engagement, assessment, plan change, intervention, evaluation, termination, that whole process, whether we're working with individuals, whether we're working with families, whether we're working with groups, whether we're working with organizations, or we're actually working with larger communities. So I hope this has provided you a little bit of a context for understanding the overall um, helping process and the role of social workers.